All right, in this video, we're going to talk a little bit more about polynomials, specifically the end behavior of polynomials, which is something, well, I haven't even introduced what a polynomial is yet, so <laughs> let's do that first. One thing at a time, Jason. All right, so let's start with a nice little definition. A polynomial function is a function of the form this is our definition polynomial function oh, why is there capital f oh well capital f in the function for extra fun it's a polynomial function if it looks like this okay a sub n x to the n now all this means a sub n right that means there's a subscript of an n and this is just a coefficient. This is just a number right here. We're not done with the definition, but again, this is just a number. It's a coefficient. And then x to the n, that's something that we've seen before. Okay, so it's a sub n times x to the n plus another one. a sub n minus 1 times x to the n minus 1, and keep on going, keep on going for a long, potentially, time, depending on how long we go, plus dot dot dot, maybe a sub 2 x squared, plus a sub 1 x to the first power, we don't have to write that first power, right, this is the same thing as that, these are identical, plus a sub 0 x to the 0, and remember, any number to the zeroth power is equal to one. So we don't actually write the x to the zero that would go here. All right, this is what a polynomial looks like in general. It's just a bunch of x's with positive exponents multiplied by a bunch of numbers. All right, we, you've probably seen polynomials before. A um, couple more definitions here. N is what's known as the degree. All right, so that n, this is the highest exponent of x. All right, so if you want, this is the highest exponent. <laughs> I really want to do this, this is stupid, right? Exponent of x is the exponent. All right, you know, I'm gonna do it. Aha, what a funny joke. All right, that's what n is. n is known as the degree. So a sub n, x to the n, the term that has that highest power is known as the leading term. And a lot of times in this section, I'm going to abbreviate this LT. And again, this is the term with that highest exponent. You know, I'm doing it again. I'm out of control today. Call the math police because this man can't be stopped. All right, let's do another one. One more definition. A sub n is what's known as the leading coefficient. So lots of definitions here. That's not how you spell coefficient, Jason. Nice try. Sometimes abbreviated LC. I don't think anyone else really abbreviates these that way or that frequently, but I do. I love abbreviations. I'll try to say it audio, audio, orally so you can hear it, but I don't like writing more than I have to. Okay, so again, in this case, this is our degree right here. This is our leading term, and this is our leading coefficient. Let's do some examples and use these definitions. Example one, find the degree, the leading term, and the leading coefficient. Part A, f of x equals negative x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus x plus 1. Now notice in our definition, right, in our definition, 
we had n and then n minus one and then so on and then two and then one and then zero for our exponents. But we don't have to have all of these, right? We don't have to have all of them. So this one, right, it starts with four and then three, it skips two and then it goes to one and zero for those exponents and that's okay. All right, so the degree is just that highest power. It's usually a good idea to underline it's a helpful tip to underline the term that has the highest exponent for x. So the highest exponent ever that, that x ever gets is 4. So that's the term that we care about. So the degree is that highest exponent. Degree is 4. This is a fourth degree polynomial, we would say. The leading term is just the entire underlying thing. Is negative x to the fourth. The leading coefficient is just the number that's being multiplied by that x. What number is getting multiplied by x? Negative 1. All right, and that's how you do these problems. Let's do another one. g of x equals 5 plus x plus 3x squared. This is not in general form. Or this is not in standard form. No, it's not in general form. All right right? Um, normally, the highest power of x is written first. But here, notice that 3x squared is kind of hiding in the back. So leading term doesn't mean the first term. It means the term with the biggest exponent um, for x. It means the first term if you have it in the right form, but you can either change the form or just underline it like this. But either way, the degree is 2. The leading term is the underlying thing, 3x squared, leading coefficient, is 3. And finally, it doesn't, we don't have to use x's. We can use whatever letters we want. Harry Potter um, is equal to 6p minus p cubed minus 2. What's the highest p ponent exponent of the variable? is that one over here. So our degree is three. Our leading term is negative p cubed. Do not forget that negative. And the leading coefficient is again, negative one. Ta-da. That's x sample one. Ha. <laughs> All right. Let's move on. So next we're going to talk about something called end behavior. All right, and oftentimes I'm going to abbreviate this as EB. So the end behavior of something just means how does F, how does our function behave as X um, goes to infinity or negative infinity? So in other words, as we go really far to the right or really far to the left, how does our function behave? Little, uh, little, uh, oh my word, I don't know what that was. Little hint of the future. This is going to be as x goes to positive infinity or as x goes to negative infinity. This is how we write it with arrows. A little, a little taste of the future. So let's explore a little bit. All right, we're gonna explore with our favorite little website, Desmos. And let's look at a polynomial. Here's a polynomial right here, just a nice little polynomial. And uh, the end behavior is as we go really far to the right, what happens? As we go really far to the left, what happens? Well, in this case, the end behavior is like this. It goes to f, the function, goes sky high. The function value in both directions goes really, really big. And it turns out, right, that this is the dominating term. The leading term is really the only important term when x gets really big, because when x gets really big, if you're squaring something, if you're raising it to the fourth, the bigger the exponent, this kind of takes over. And it doesn't matter what I do to this other stuff, look, Let's add an x here. It changes stuff on the inside, but what happens at the ends of this function? 
right? Let's let's change it some more, right? Let's add, let's make this a plus. Let's make this a three. Oh, different things on the inside, but end behavior, still the same. It's still going up in both directions. And we can do whatever we want, right? To the inside. But it, until we change this term, the end behavior is gonna be the same. So let's change this to a five. Whoa, now the end behavior is different, right? It's no longer this, it's, uh, you can't see very well. It's like this, <laughs> all right? So the leading term is the only thing that matters for end behavior. And the good news is that as long as you can remember this toolkit function, x cubed, and this toolkit function, x squared, you know all the possibilities for end behavior. So let's pause on that note. Hold that thought. I'm going to give you a little table that you can use for end behavior. The end behavior of a polynomial with leading term a sub n Woo. a sub n x to the n is given and can be calculated with the following little table. All right, so we're going to make a three, three by three table, kind of like we're playing tic-tac-toe. And uh, if the leading coefficient is positive, one thing is going to happen. If the leading coefficient is negative, another thing's going to happen. If n, remember n is the degree, is even, something will happen. And if n is odd, something else will happen. All we have to do is fill in the blanks. So the good news is that this has everything to do with parabolas and cubic functions. All right, think about x squared and x cubed. That's where this whole table comes from. So this first case, an even degree and a positive coefficient, that's going to behave like x squared. It's going to go up on the left. We don't know what's happening in the middle, so I'm just going to write some squiggles. And it's going up on the right. Now if, uh, let's go over here. Now again, if n is even, if we have an even degree, it's going to be like x squared. But if the leading coefficient and we can even write, right? This is like, this is like x squared. If it's an even degree and a negative coefficient, well, that negative coefficient just flips that upside down. We don't know what happens in the middle. But we only care about end behavior here. So again, this is like negative x squared. And we do the same thing with cubics. If the degree is odd, with a positive coefficient, it behaves like positive x cubed. We don't know what happens in the middle, but the end behavior is going to look like this. And similarly, the negative coefficient, it just goes the opposite way. Like negative x cubed. Okay, so you can use this table, so, you know, whatever, but uh, this is one way of remembering it, just thinking about x squared and x cubed, okay? And we can kind of see that in our little Desmos example here, right? Um, what's the leading coefficient? It's positive. Positive one is the leading coefficient. What's the degree? Five. Odd degree says it, the end behavior should be like x cubed. Positive coefficient says it should go up on the right and down on the left. Up on the right and down on the left. Okie dokie, that's how you can kind of use this. Let's do a problem, two more problems to end this video. Determine the end behavior of the functions in example one. Okay, so what was example one? First function, had an even degree and a negative leading coefficient. 
right? Degree is even. Leading coefficient is negative. So it should have the same end behavior as a negative parabola. This is what the end behavior should look like. Right? Even degree says we're in this row. Okay, let's use a different color. Even degree says we're in this row. Negative leading coefficient. All right, what's the overlap? Right here. Downwards parabola. You can also use other lingo for this. You can say as x goes to infinity, f of x goes to negative infinity. All right, as x goes to the right, y goes to, to the down, <laughs> uh, y goes down. It's another way of phrasing this. Similarly, as x goes to the left, negative infinity, y also goes to negative infinity. So this is the notation that the book uses. We'll use this a lot more in 5.6. In the meantime, you can just draw pictures if you want. Part B, at an even degree, and a positive leading coefficient. So it'll function like a positive parabola. For the end behavior, again, we don't know what happens in this middle section. We're only looking at end behavior. And finally, part C has an odd degree and a negative leading coefficient. So degree is odd. Negative leading coefficient means it behaves like a negative cubic function at the ends. Or again, you could use the other lingo, right? As x goes to the right, the function goes down. As x goes to the left, the function goes up. And you could do the same thing for this one too. All right, one final example to end this kind of long video. This is basically the entire section in this video right here. Example three. Using a graph, determine the end behavior. Part A, we'll look at f of x equals x times x minus three times x plus three. This one's not fact, this one is factored. It's not in general form. So it's a little hard to see the degree and the leading coefficient. Uh, we can, we'll talk a little bit later, probably in one. Precalc 2 um, about where that uh, where that connection is, but there is a way to do it. It's not that hard. We just don't really have time for it. So let's graph it. All right, let's graph x times x minus 3 times x plus 3. And let's zoom out so we can see what's going on. Okay, so this is going up on the right and down on the left. It's the same end behavior as our toolkit function, that cubic function. It's going up on the right, going down on the left, and we only care about end behavior, so we'll just draw some squiggles in the middle. That's the end behavior. Or again, you can use it. You can answer in what's known as arrow notation. Part B is going to be g of x equals x cubed minus 0.01x. Again, we're going to graph it. x, ooh, that's not it. <laughs> x cubed minus 0.01x. And uh, we might have to zoom in. No, we don't. We can maybe zoom in and see what's going on in the middle. But what's going on in the middle doesn't matter for this question. The question is just asking about end behavior. In this case, we have the same answer. It's going up on the right, going down on the left, and we don't care about the middle for end behavior. So you can really answer just like this. If you want to use arrow notation, that's fine too, but you don't have to use arrow notation. As x goes to the right, the function goes up, and as x goes to the left, 
the function goes down. All right, good luck. Let me know if you have questions and enjoy.